So AsyncJS is not only useful for control flow, it's, only, it's also very useful for iterations. Async the times is one of the examples. You can use it to run something X amount of times. So let's say you have a function here called add entry to DB. This function takes an ID and a callback. So when you do the callback, and you can pass an error parameter in the first entry, and then in the second parameter it will be the value that will be returned to the next function. So here we call async times, and I want to run this five times. So I want to create five entries to the database. And this function, async times, takes a function uh, here, and then the final fu callback function at the, as the third parameter. For on the second parameter, we'll just call add to entry db and then n here is the iterator so at the beginning it will start at 0 and then 1 and 2 and so on so here we would pass that iterator in and serve it as the id for the entry and then we basically call the next function which will run the next loop in the iteration with the value of entry in here so once all of this is done we go to the final callback if there's error, we'll just log the error and return it. Otherwise, we'll just return entries. Entries will be the combination of all the, the results passed back from the previous iterations. So let's see how this works when I execute it. As you can see, you have five entries with five elements. So let's say I want to simulate an error. So let's say when it runs to the third uh, iteration, something error, something bad happened, and uh, this gets passed to the next function. As you can see, it stopped right away. So, and it just stops here. And I'm having a return early, so it doesn't run anything else. But if you want to see what's in the entries, you can check this out. As you can see, it stops at the fourth one. So since array starts at 0, it's 0, 1, 2, 3. So it stops. So it's very useful if you want to do some iterations.